a really good idea today. So I'm going to show you how to make a college portfolio for fashion design. I actually made a portfolio this summer for fashion design. It was at a college. I took a two week summer course there and the whole entire time we just made a college portfolio and I got one of the highest grades in the class. So you can use my portfolio as an example. I don't want you to copy it, but use it as an example or a guideline when you're making your portfolio for fashion design. I'm gonna show you every page in it and basically how it's done because most people don't get to make their portfolio at a college. Most people make it at home and you're probably all clueless, like what do you do? I was clueless and I got a lot of help, so I'm gonna help you guys too. So I'll show you my portfolio. All right, here it is. Basically what a portfolio is, kind of like you're making a collection, but you're not actually making it, you're sketching it on paper. Basically, if you were making a collection, what it would look like, and you like plan it all out and you just send it to the school that you're applying to. And making a cover page is optional, but it's also recommended. So if you see something that's optional, you should probably do it because just having a cover page makes it a lot uh, more visually nice, I guess. The name of my collection is called Watercolor. I thought of this title the day before my presentation, and the way I got this title was because it had to do with my symbol, and a symbol is a totally other thing that I will tell you about. At the college I went to, the college, um, I'm not gonna say the name of it because they've actually already changed their requirements so it wouldn't even make sense for me to tell you what college it was. You choose a symbol and make a whole collection based off of the symbol. So the symbol that I chose was the lotus flower. They gave you like a whole um, selection of symbols to choose from. I didn't just like come up with this lotus flower idea in my head. Um, I just thought the lotus flower would be a good symbol for me to make a collection about. Um, so basically what I did was my whole entire portfolio is based off of the lotus flower. Um, I had no idea what this flower was about, I just thought it was a nice flower. So I had to do all this research on this symbol and your school might have this same thing, like they want you to have an inspiration. And so I had to like find quotes and stuff about the lotus flower. It was a little tedious and I wasn't expecting to be researching or going on like biology websites when I was making this but I had to, um, you know, my theme was very like watercolory, light colors, spring, uh, lotusy, flowery because the lotus flower grows in water. I learned too much about flowers doing during making this, but um, you know, it it connects. If you don't if you don't get if you don't understand that, it connects somehow. Um, all right, so I'll go to the next page. After your cover page, you will have your mood board. Um, it's actually folded so it's a little like uh, wrinkled a little bit. This is my least favorite part of the portfolio. Even though it was fun to make, I just don't really like the result of this. So a mood board is basically a board that inspires your collection. You're supposed to look at this and you're supposed to have like some sort of inspiration of what the collection would be like, which you'll see later on because part of the portfolio is like actually drawing things. So these are just a bunch of pictures pulled together. I incorporated some fabrics in there, um, a few bits of clothing. clothing. You don't want to put that much clothing in the paper because um, it's like not original. A lot of artwork, like watercolor things. Once you have your idea and inspiration, you just find images that, you know, have to do with that. Next, on your third page, you will have a customer board. Customer board. The customer board is a piece of paper made up of pictures that depicts your customer who would most likely buy something from this collection. So when I was making this, like everyone pretty much did the same type of customer, which is like a high-end young person, which was basically what the professor wanted us to do because it's like, that's probably the easiest to design for. So I just did like a young girl who had a lot of money because then she can like buy from this collection and she likes photography, art and stuff. All right, then this part took me a whole week to do. It was a two week course and this next part took a while, but it's also a large chunk of your portfolio. The next part is research and I'm kind of a little out of order right now. I'm not gonna show you every page of the research because my research is about seven pages. Um, 
Research is basically notes. They make it sound nicer by saying research, but you literally have notes or like your process of how you're designing these things in your portfolio. So for example, you will see later on that I make a dress that has to do with the scallop pattern. And the scallop pattern was inspired by the lotus flower because it has a lot of layers to it. So this is just a piece of paper of more pictures that I just printed out but the difference from mood board and research is that research is more focused on what you want the clothing to look like. So there's a lot of like, you know, patterns I like. You can actually even do like, you know, bad sketches on here and make it part of your research because what they want to see is your process, not anything like set in stone. They want to see, um, you know, the first things that you were thinking about and how it came from like the basic idea to like at the end of your portfolio, the full on sketch of the person. This is just one page of research. And then this is the example of like an idea that I had of a dress that I was gonna make. You can also get fabric swatches if you have ideas of what fabrics you might use. So for this one, I use the Prada image as an example. And I also wrote notes next to it, um, such as like, you know, colors I might use because I liked the colors in that picture. Um, also here you can see that I used some fabric swatches because um, like I really liked this shiny black material and so I could go back to that later on when I was actually, if I'm actually making the clothes, I can go back to my research later on and be like, oh wait, I thought about that. So you can like save the fabric. So my inspiration was the Lotus. Um, and I found this picture of a dress and it kind of looked a lot like the flower. So I put notes next to it saying like the colors I like, how it like puffed out at the bottom and it was tight at the top. Um, and then also the colors that I was interested in because they looked a lot like these colors. It's also good to maybe put down ideas you might have about the medium you might use. These were like some light pastel colored uh, markers I used. So I'm just gonna show you one more page of research, even though I have a few more pages, they're all pretty much the same. This is uh, something that's a little different on this page though, is I printed out this picture, which is one that I was inspired by. Basically, you print out anything that inspires you. I was printing out so many things when I was making this. So I printed out something that inspired me and then I drew a dress that I thought was kind of similar to it but also original because the worst thing you could do is copy something that you find. So I made kind of like, this inspired me, but I made this out of it and it kind of relates to a lotus flower because of the shape of it. Also put some fabric examples here, um, color examples another skirt I might have made. Also, just so you know, the sketches that you saw here don't have to be what your final sketch is. So now I'll show you the end of my portfolio, which is the last, um, you know, four to six pages. And each page has a different um, final sketch and flat sketch on it, which I'll show you what that is. I actually forgot to mention the last thing before you have your final sketches. Um, the last thing you have before your final sketches is called your fabric story. So since I chose five different looks, I had to choose the fabric and what type of fabric it was for every, you know, piece on the look. So this is my fabric story and you also have to make it look kind of cool. I don't know if you can see it that well, but for example, in the background of each one, I put like a sparkly gold paint on it. And then over it, I put a fabric that I would use. Um, I think for this piece, it was like a long dress and the fabric was gonna be this. And the color of the fabric was gonna be this. Also a mistake that I made was I glued down the whole fabric, but actually what the admissions people or like, the people who look at your portfolio, what they wanna see is um, they want to feel the fabric so they can feel what kind of material it is. Um, you know, I I talked to my professor and I was like, I made a huge mistake. Like I didn't, you know, give it room so you could see what it was. And he was like, that's okay. Just like try to like take it off. And it, it looked terrible. And I actually redid this um, three times 
Uh, it was terrible. And then here is like a leather one. So when you're making this, you could probably just go to a fabric store. When I was making this, they had a whole room of leftover fabric from their fashion show. So I just went there and that was really helpful. So, okay, now you've got your fabric, you've got your research and everything. Then you make your flat sketches and your final sketch. So you wanna make it look cool so it's not just a piece of paper with the sketch on it. Um, it's also good to have some sort of like pattern to it. So I actually made before I show you the whole paper, which I you just saw it, but I made this thing on the corner. It was a piece of paper. I just like uh, scribbled all over it and then made photocopies of it. So they're all over each page and then I like cut out that paper. And as you'll see on the other pages, um, they're just like all over the place in random places. So this was my first final look and it was inspired by one of the pages on my research. It was like, uh, that page that had a black dress on it. You know, you just have to make your final sketch, um, draw it on a croaky figure, and then, you know, color it in. But then this thing right here is a flat sketch that is done on the computer. Um, basically, if you were, like, actually making this collection, you would have to make a portfolio like this anyway to send to the manufacturer and you'd have to make like a flat sketch that tells like the technical details of how you would make this so it shows like all the seams and pleats and everything and like that's really important because when you're getting it made then they know how to make it this is recommended to be done on the computer you can use photoshop for that i'm pretty sure you can do it handwritten but probably not that recommended if you do have like any type of software on your computer that can make these sketches and that would be great too. You can also use a tablet to like draw and it shows up on the computer. I don't really know how that works, but you can also use a tablet to make it. You can also put two looks on one page if they go together. So I had these two looks. I know that my drawings are not perfect, so do not judge me on that. And I had to make this all in two weeks, so my designs are not exactly how I would want them to be. So that was just a side note, like having two weeks to make this, the designs weren't perfect, so that's why when I do apply for college, I'm going to make a few changes to this portfolio. Um, so those are the two looks, and then the dress is next to it. And like looking from the sketch and then the actual flat design, like you can see more clearly about how the dress is made, like how it flows and like it's supposed to go that certain way. Um, so yeah, I gotta add that in there. Um, this one is my fourth look and colleges usually recommend four to six looks. I think I did five looks. Um, I was gonna do six, but I remember I drew the sixth one, I made the final thing and everything, it looked terrible. I was just like, I'm not even doing that. This one's probably one of my favorites because I just really like the ombre there. And uh, I think the flat sketch came out pretty good. It was pretty hard to make this sketch because uh, it was just so like, you know, detailed and everything. And since there were ruffles, I had to make those like squigglies, which the squigglies are really hard to make. My last one is like an evening gown, which incorporates like the scallops that I was, that I had in my research. And for this sketch, actually, I had to put the front and back. You usually don't have to put a uh, front and back on your flat sketch, unless there's something interesting in the back or like something that's technical. Like if you just did the front sketch, you wouldn't know how the dress goes on. Like if you do the back, then you can see that there is like a zipper in the back um, and like how it connects. So this was the only look where I had to put a back view on. So that's my whole portfolio. And the last thing I want to show you was the markers that I used for uh, making this. These are the Prismacolor Premier Art Markers. Um, they look like this. These I would definitely like 100% recommend. The colors are so vibrant and they're actually really good for making uh, sketches with clothes because they absorb really well and they like blend together. So they're really good for making shadows. Um, they're really bold and they come in like all the basic colors right here. One side is like this, the other side is like that. Um, they're really good for drawing on. So the other set of markers that were really helpful were the skin tone 
markers. They're the best skin tone markers I've seen, even though I haven't really seen many skin tone markers. But right, here's what they look like. So I don't think these are the best skin tone markers because they don't really look like skin tones, some of them. Basically, when you test these out, some of them don't look like how they look right here. But if you are wondering what type of brushes these are, they are the Dual Brush Pens by Tombow. They look like this. Thank you so much for watching this video. My camera's running out of space in like five seconds, so I gotta go. But I'm gonna make another video soon.